Government. So this this very important issue of climate jobs. Uh, here's Ken Montague. Keep yourselves warm. Give him a round of applause. Okay, well, thanks for coming along this afternoon. Um, I'm asked to be brief, but I do want to say something about the first week of the COP, really important developments um, on the global climate jobs front. Um, I was in Paris during that first week attending some very large, very many trade union meetings, meetings of the world's trade unionists, organized by the International Trade Union Confederation. My heart is in Paris today because I'd love to be there on those static demos and those acts of civil disobedience despite the police ban. But I'm not going to talk about where my heart is but what my head tells me. We don't yet know the final wording of the text for the Paris Agreement. But all the indications are that on the three benchmarks which have been set by the World's Trade Union Movement it will be a failure. I am not as optimistic as Sean. The first benchmark was ambition. Now, from what we do know, the agreement is not going to be as ambitious as it needs to be. It's all going to be down to lo locally determined criteria without any really serious monitoring. In other words, countries can go about doing what they the individually intent, no kind of binding international agreement. Kevin Anderson from the Tyndall Centre for Climate Change Research suggests that the likely outcome of this will be an increase in global temperatures to around 2.7 degrees above pre-industrial conditions. That will be suicidal. The second benchmark was finance. How much was the, develop was the developing countries who actually was the problem of, of, of global emissions? How much were they going to give to developing countries to de go on developing but with renewable energy? All the indications are that it would not be enough. The third benchmark was a just transition to a sustainable economy. In other words, the maintenance of workers' rights, the maintenance of jobs so that people weren't just thrown on the dole as the old sunset industries are closed down, and the maintenance of social protections. That was moved from the operative text to the preamble. In other words, you can take it and leave it as you please. So whatever the final wording of the Paris Agreement, we know that the fight will go on. And I don't want to speak very much longer, but I do want to say that I believe that at the centre of that fight will be the movement for climate jobs. Um, there was a meeting on Tuesday um, organised by the Global Climate Jobs Movement and the Trade Unions for Energy and Democracy with Naomi Klein speaking and Jeremy Corbyn speaking. This was in Paris on, sorry, Monday, on Monday. At the beginning of that meeting, Jeremy Corbyn stood up and said, everybody should read this pamphlet. <laughs> One million climate jobs. Yay. I hope Jeremy has read the pamphlet or will read the pamphlet because there will be a delegation of us going to see him as soon as possible in the new year. Why I'm optimistic about this, despite the personal pessimism about the agreement, is that the global climate jobs movement, the movement to create jobs to directly tackle climate change and provide decent, um, well-paid, secure jobs in Britain for 1 million people, something like 120 million people around the world. The reason I'm optimistic about this is because since 2009, the movement has taken off internationally. We now have developed climate jobs movements in six countries, a whole number of other countries beginning to put them together. Sometimes they're very small. We had a meeting in Paris with people who were planning a climate jobs movement in New Zealand and somebody else in Mauritius. But the Canadian delegation to the COP um, are holding meetings with their government in the 30 days after the publication of the agreement to push for Canada to move on to the creation of climate jobs. So we have a fight. It will be a fight on many fronts. But I believe 
at the centre of that battle will be the battle to create jobs, to tackle climate change, to reduce emissions, not in 30 years, but in 20 years, by about 80%. So let's go on with the fight and let's move on to the bridge. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much. How you been watching, Mrs. Yeah, Bagg-Clement?